Mario Party. Is it the chess of our age, or just an elaborate skin on a dice game? This is what we tried to determine in these videos. We've already analyzed the most recent entry in the series, now we take a look at one of the oldest. Today we find out if you can ride pure RNG to victory by discovering the following. Is it possible to beat Mario Party 2 by doing absolutely nothing? So, what exactly are our rules today? The first and most obvious rule is that we can't do anything during minigames. Once the minigame starts, we cannot press any buttons on the controller for the duration of the minigame. Where the rules get a bit more complicated is on the board. Obviously we can't press literally nothing on the board because we'd end up stuck here. What our rules are aiming to eliminate during the board portion of the game is any player choice or strategy. We are allowed to press buttons required to progress the game, such as pressing A on dialogues or to roll the dice, or start to start minigames. We however cannot select anything other than the game's default selection for any choice. So when we come to a fork in the road, we have to pick whatever path is selected by default. When we get to a store, we have to purchase whatever item is selected by default. Essentially, if the game ever gives us a choice of any kind on the board, we have to pick the option where our selection starts out, which is usually the top option. If we can win on all six boards while abiding by these rules, then it's a challenge successful. Alright, with the rules set, let's party. Now before we can properly start the festivities, we need to set the settings for the board. Now let's see. We'll of course be playing as Luigi, and we'll be playing against Mario, Peach, and Wario. We'll be setting all computer players to easy difficulty, the game length will be 20 turns, and we'll be having no bonus stars. Because in this game, the bonus stars are always the same three. The minigame star, the happening star, and the coin star two of which we have almost no chance of winning, with the other being one that we don't necessarily have any better chance of winning than the AI. Therefore, turning off bonus stars will likely give us a better chance of winning. And now with all that said, it's off to board one, Pirate's Land. Before we talk about Pirate's Land specifically, we should go over what exactly a Mario Party 2 turn doing absolutely nothing typically entails. Well, we press A to advance, then press A to roll the dice block. It should be noted that we can't use items, which is certainly unfortunate. When we visit a shop when we do not already have an item in our inventory, we must buy the top item, which normally ends up being a mushroom. Not that it matters to us what it is. Now how about intersections? Back in Super Mario Party, the default path to take at an intersection was always whatever way was the shortest route to the star. In Mario Party 2, that is not the case. This time around, each intersection has a specific direction that is always the default direction, regardless of where the star is. This means that entire sections of the board may be entirely locked off to us. Take Pirate Land as an example. All the intersections on this board are either locked behind skeleton key gates, which require skeleton keys to use, which we are extremely unlikely to ever have in our possession and therefore can't use, or are guarded by thwomps. Now the default choice for a thwomp guarded intersection is to pay the thwomp. So that means unless we are completely broke, in which case intersection choice is likely the least of our worries, our route through Pirate Land is almost entirely just circling the starting islands. That leaves two whole islands that we can barely set foot on. One thing this image doesn't take into consideration is the fact that landing on this blue space allows us to pay a shark to take us over here, which gives us some decent access to the second island. But even given that, we still have practically no way of getting to the third island, and some parts of the second island, 
which leaves us completely out of contention for a couple of star spawns. Hopefully, in spite of all our limitations, this board goes alright. Twenty-five attempts later. Man, this is just not working. I've spent well over 24 hours on this, and haven't beaten a single board. I can't necessarily write it off as impossible, because with perfect luck it may in fact be possible. In any case, the odds of me actually seeing that luck pan out would be extremely low. What we need is a way to see numerous possible outcomes in much quicker succession. Enter. Restore points. I'm playing this game on the Wii U Virtual Console, which means I can create a restore point at the beginning of my turn, and if things go poorly, I can load the restore point and see a different role, and therefore a different possible outcome. Your role is not determined before the beginning of your turn, so creating a restore point before the dice is rolled allows you to see all the possible outcomes of a turn, and choose to advance with the best one. Now. Some of you may think this doesn't really count as doing nothing. To that, I say that the whole essence of what we were doing before was repeatedly restarting the whole game in hopes of getting better RNG. All the restore points do is make that process more efficient by allowing us to restart a turn for better RNG. Ultimately, this is the most efficient way to actually get an answer to the question of if it's possible to beat Mario Party 2 by doing absolutely nothing in our lifetimes. Personally, I don't care much for the question of if my luck is good enough to beat Mario Party 2 by doing absolutely nothing. So going forward, we will be using Restore Points. Alright, here we are, Pirate's Land, and this time, with Restore Points on our side. Now, there are some things that Restore Points can't change, such as the fact that we can't access the third island, which happens to be where the first star is located. No matter though, we can let the AI have that one, while we hopefully rack up some cash by landing on the bank space. Hmm. It would seem that they don't have any funds for us to withdraw right now. Well, at least we didn't have to deposit five coins. We aren't too particular about the next couple of turns, as we're mostly just biding our time waiting for the AI to grab the first star. That being said, landing on a happening space and getting sent back to the beginning of the board is pretty useful, as it allows us another chance to land on the bank and withdraw 15 coins. One thing to note about using a restore point is that it doesn't only have the power to change my role. It can change my opponent's roles too, so for example, we can use it to stop Wario from landing on the bank. Also, Mario got the star this turn, and I feel pretty good about my odds of getting to the next star location. Wario made a second star appear. No matter though, as it's on the way to the one that was already there. Definitely want to take care not to land on happening spaces now. This turn, I finally got my first star. The next one is in a tougher spot to get, but I think I have a legitimate chance. This turn also brings us a battle minigame. Back in the way we did things before, a battle minigame would spell disaster, as it would basically just be an avenue for the AI to take coins from us. But here, we can reload a restore point to get a different minigame, one that might be more favorable to us, like one of the luck-based ones. This leads battle minigames to yield us much better results. This turn we steal some coins from the only player we can on this board, Wario. In a twist of great luck, this resulted in Wario not having enough coins for the star as he passed it this turn. Then, Peach activated another battle minigame. This time I learned something very valuable. We can make a restore point on the rules screen just before starting the minigame, which allows us to continually replay the minigame and get a better outcome. So whenever a minigame that is entirely luck-based comes up like a day at the races, Enough patience will guarantee us a victory. Peach is denied a star on account of being too poor, 
and I once again lose this turn's minigame. I haven't mentioned the regular minigames too much because they just aren't that interesting to talk about, as I have basically zero chance to win the vast majority of them. And if I'm going to be taking the AI's coins through the bank and battle minigames anyway, the regular minigames really don't have that much of an impact. I secured even more cash by landing on the bank this turn. I used the restore points to ensure that I landed on the shark and got on the second island. Then Mario landed on a chance time just before the star and gave me 20 coins. How nice of him. Mario did go on to win the minigame, giving him just enough coins to afford the star. No matter though, as a sufficiently high roll doesn't give Mario the chance to try buying the star. The next star is unreachable for me, and Peach steals some of my coins. What a jerk. Wario does indeed get the star this turn, and the next one is obtainable for me. I was also quite entertained by Luigi in the minigame this turn. He looks so unsure of himself. Strawberry. They said strawberry on the kick, right? But which one? Oh, I can't even tell the difference! Maybe they're all virtually identical? Or maybe I'm so unqualified for this job that I can't even perceive their obvious differences? Best that I do nothing then. Getting a 1 here would bring me back to the start, which would fast track me to the star, so I made sure that happened. Later in the turn, Mario activated a battle minigame, which after many, many, many failed attempts, I ran out of patience and just settled for a joint first place with Mario. I got very close to the star this turn, then Mario stole some coins from me. Luckily, Bowser stepped in to crush the Mario bourgeoisie with a Bowser Revolution! For equality indeed, comrade! I got a star this turn, and the next one is so far away that I highly doubt anyone else has much of a chance to get it. Now I can sit pretty with my three stars and cruise to an easy victory. That is indeed what happened, leading to a Luigi victory here in Pirate Land. Now for the next bowl. Welcome to Western Land. First thing to know about Western Land is that the interior is completely off limits to us, since at every intersection on the railroad, the default way to go is continuing along the railroad. This will lock us out of a few stars. Another interesting difference on this board as compared to Pirate Land is the bank placement. Namely the fact that the banks are in much more out of the way places than they were in Pirate Land. This might make it a bit more difficult to acquire a significant amount of funds by repeatedly landing on the bank. Well, no reason not to get started. Let's just hope there ends up being a lot of stars spawning on the tracks. The first star is in the middle of town. Apparently every time we pass by the train, we are obligated to ride it. I also got run down by the train on this turn. I took the train again and ran down some of my fellow cowboys. Peach got the game's first star, and the next one is on the tracks. It is my time to shine. I didn't have enough coins for the star at the start of this turn. Good thing there was a boo on the way that allowed me to steal some from Mario. Not that I really needed to, as Wario activated a battle minigame, which with a considerable amount of patience I ended up coming out of victorious. And in even more surprising news, I carried my team in the 1v3 minigame this turn. With all this money, I was able to gain a star this turn and get run over by Peach. Which is a pretty good thing, because that actually brings me closer to the next star. In several permutations of this turn, Wario invites us all to the milk bar. Which as kind as it is of him, I am not too pleased by, as it takes me away from the star I'm after. I did eventually find one where he doesn't do that. A big roll this turn brings me very close to the star. I got a star, stole some coins from Mario, and won a lot of coins in the minigame. A pretty good turn, I'd say. Peach got a star, and the next one is in town, so there's no chance of me getting it. I just hope it's not Peach. I passed by the milk bar this turn, which is dangerous. The reason it's dangerous is that it costs 20 coins. Which, for the record, isn't cheap. For that 20 coins, you put everyone else just before it on the board. This gives them a chance to use it, and if just one of them uses it, guess who's forced to pay 20 coins again? 
This is not the type of situation you want to find yourself in. Luckily, I was able to find a permutation of this turn where everyone just walks on by the milk bar, paying it no mind. Crisis averted. I stole some coins from Mario this turn. Then, Mario used his box to steal... a box. Okay. I'm in first place. You'd think I'd be happy about that, but practically speaking, it just means that there is a big target on my back. Which does not bode well for me when everyone is about to go by Boo. My biggest concern is Wario, as he has enough coins on hand to steal a star. I eventually found a series of events where Wario turns down a path that will have him skip Boo for no apparent reason. Hey, I'll take it. I'm still technically winning. I'm tied with Peach for most stars and have a very narrow coin lead on her. I do not think anyone will reach the next star by the end of the game, so if I can just manage to keep my coin lead on Peach, I should win the board. Wario winning a high stakes duel against Peach certainly helps with that. Peach does then immediately duel me, but since she only has three coins right now, there isn't enough at stake for it to have any real impact. My prediction was correct. No one managed to get that star in time, and with Peach's coffers decimated, that leaves Luigi as the uncontested superstar of Western Land. Next up, Mario Party in space! Let us once again start by examining our route through the board. Once again, the default path brings us around the perimeter of the map. We aren't necessarily stuck on the edge though, because if we are nearly run over by a car being pursued by the police, we gain access to these diagonal paths. These paths lead to the center from which we must go down. And just to be clear, police chases are going to be commonplace, since whenever we pass a police station, we have to pay to set up a speed trap. A 10 is a pretty good way to start this board. We even obtained a win in the first minigame. This turn, we got to see a police chase in action, which has put us en route to the star, but has also left us with almost no coins. We could not afford the star, and Peach got it instead. We have been able to improve our financial situation by landing on the bank space this turn. On another note, Mario got a star on this turn. This turn was a bit mixed. On the one hand, both Wario and Peach got themselves a star. On the other hand, we did win a battle minigame, which has gained us even more coins. Then Mario gets another star. We got a large roll this turn, which should hopefully help us get to the next star. We also stole some coins from Mario. Another 10 is helping us lead the foot race to the star. Finally, we have gotten a star. Let's hope we can get some more soon. Another 10 was rolled this turn, which helps us get around towards the next star and happens to land us on a bank space. Somehow Peach and I won this minigame while I, as our goalie, did absolutely nothing. We got another star. This only brings us to second place. However, we are closest to the next star. If we can get to it before the end of the game, we should win. And a 9 definitely puts us within striking distance. We get a third star this turn, and no one else manages to get one. So that means we have one space land. We are halfway to overall victory now. Mystery Land has very few areas that we flat out can't get to. In fact, we can completely circle off the four main areas. Although it should be noted that we have to travel via Babom UFO whenever we get the opportunity, which means that we can't circumnavigate the bottom right and top left areas in one go. Nevertheless, we can still get to every part of the areas. On a broader level, since landing on a happening space is an important aspect of navigating the board, our restore points should be particularly useful here. I started out by landing on a bank space, which didn't actually pay me anything, but it did at least prevent me from losing 5 coins. I got to the star this turn, but did not have enough coins to actually afford it. I landed on a happening space and got sent to another area. I was already past the star, so I couldn't have gotten it staying here anyway. I won a battle minigame and Peach got a star. I cursed myself this turn. Yeah, I have to buy curses whenever I pass the curse house, and I always have to pick the top option, which in this case is myself. This turn I got to the area with the star, and Wario stole a star from Peach. I have obtained a star this turn. 
I landed on the happening space, which is getting me closer to the star. I refilled my fun somewhat by landing on a bank space. I landed on a happening space, which has landed me in the area with the star. In other news, Mario stole a star from Wario. I got a star, and Peach also got a star this turn. I also cursed myself again this turn. I made a lot of money this turn, by both landing on a bank space and winning a battle minigame. I got to the area with the star, and as a result lost a low stakes duel to Peach. No big deal though, really. Peach was nearing the star, but luckily, this turn she was banished to the next area. We've got a one star lead going into this last turn, and since no one gets a star this turn, we win Mystery Land. Now for Horror Land. This is a very complex board, and the fault lies with these swamps. Let's start with the daytime, during which, whenever we encounter a Womp intersection, the default direction to go is whichever way the Womp is blocking, which isn't even a consistent direction, since whenever one of our opponents picks the direction that the Womp isn't blocking, it shifts to start blocking that direction. Then of course there's nighttime, during which you can't go the direction the Womp is blocked. So basically these Womp intersections can allow us to go either direction at them, just very unpredictably. Another point of the board is that when we get to Mr. I, we have no choice but to warp back down, which can be a bit annoying. Very uneventful first turn. Man, these Womps are a bit pricey, aren't they? A day at the races once again gained us some good coin. Peach got a star this turn, and then Bowser put a star right behind me. I also carried my team in the minigame. This turn we gained some bank space money. I stole some coins from Peach this turn. A 10 just barely gets us to the star right ahead of Wario. It's time to stop by the bank again. This turn Mario gets a star. It's bank time once again. If there's one thing you can't say about Horrorland, it's that it's underbanked. Mario got a star this turn, which caused the next star to spawn right in front of me. Cool. I got a star and Peach got a star this turn. We've got a three-way tie for first in terms of stars. Hopefully I can set myself apart. Winning a battle minigame should help with that. Wario losing a duel certainly doesn't help with that. Good thing we can reload. One last trip to the bank caps off our adventure in Horrorland, and the result was victory. Just one board left, let's knock it out. The final board is Bowserland, and the route here is interesting. We go the whole way down the bottom of the board, then when we get to the center we must go up. At the top we have to go left, which then loops us around to the center where we must go up, which then leads us to the top where we must go left. We can escape this never-ending cycle by landing on a happening space to escape via warp pipe, though. There's also the way the bank works here, which is the opposite of how they work on the other worlds. In Bowserland, you get coins for passing by the bank and lose coins for landing on the bank. There's also the Bowser Parade, which we have to shift the route of whenever we pass by a parade planning office. Alright, let's go. Mario stole my coins this turn. I couldn't afford to pay Boo or change the parade route. The Bowser Parade occurred this turn, which eliminated a lot of capital from the economy. The one unaffected player, Wario, then proceeded to get a star. I stole Mario's coins this turn, so yay, I finally have enough cash to purchase a star. I stole Mario's coins again this turn. The parade only impacted Peach this turn. Having rolled a 10, I was able to buy a star just before Wario got the chance. I then won a battle minigame. This turn, I escaped that endless loop through a happening space warp pipe. I got my second star this turn. Peach got a star this turn. I stole even more coins from Mario, and Peach reached the star. Luckily, she didn't have enough coins to actually acquire it. I landed on a happening space to hopefully stay safe from the Bowser Parade. I was indeed among the few that the Bowser Parade didn't impact. Overall, the final turn is pretty low stakes, and therefore goes by quite smoothly, and ends with us winning the board. Which means that all six boards have been beaten, and therefore, though the odds are extremely stacked against you, it is possible to beat Mario Party 2 by doing absolutely nothing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Perhaps even also turning on notifications 
so you can be informed about new uploads. But anyways guys, until next time, I've been ZoomerCraft, getting ready to work on a new video for you all to enjoy. Goodbye.